What can we expect from King Charles? The first televised Christmas speech by a king. Yes, I mean, this is a speech of profound historical significance. It's 90 years, actually, since the very first speech King George V what? delivered in 1932, so important for that event in itself. Also 70 years since the Queen's first Christmas speech was delivered in 1952, and the King is only the third King in history to have delivered a Christmas speech. His great-grandfather, George V, his great-uncle Edward VIII didn't reign long enough to give a speech, but then his grandfather, King George VI, did up until 1951. So it's amazing to think of 90 years, almost 70 of those was just our own Queen delivering those speeches. <laughs> wow. And this will, of course, be the first televised one. An inspired decision, I think, to have it in St George's Chapel, Windsor, obviously where his parents are now lying at rest together with his mother's committal service only taking place a few weeks ago, really, uh, in September. Uh, and I think it would be inconceivable if he didn't pay tribute to her extraordinary reign and legacy, which culminated, of course, in the glorious Platinum Jubilee, which we saw over the, over the summer, the perfect perfect uh, cherry on the cake of a, of a life of service. You know, when the Queen gave her first... Well, her last Christmas message was actually a tribute to her late husband, who had died. Mm. Her first Christmas message was a tribute to her father, who had just died. And there she also pledged herself to the country and said that she will carry on his traditions. And I think we can expect the same thing from the King. Yeah. Well, we very emotional viewing, won't it, for many British people. I was saying to Patrick oh. earlier, I think for many people, it won't hit home, really, until they sit down on Christmas Day, 3pm, as they always have, and it's not Her Majesty on the screen, it's her son instead. And he will have to strike that balance, won't he, between his own Christmas message and also relaying that emotion that I'm sure so many people will feel. For millions of people across the country and indeed across the Commonwealth, you're quite right. The, the Queen's Christmas speech is as much part of Christmas tradition and Christmas Day as Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Probably enjoyed a lot more by some people than others. And I think to, to have someone else deliver that speech will really be a, quite a shock to some people because it's su such a part of our established tradition. But, you know, every monarch makes the Christmas speech their own. Uh, we know that this is actually a moment, the one moment of the year when the sovereign writes their own speech. The Queen always wrote her own speech with a bit of input from Prince Philip and her staff, but no government interference. A rare chance to have someone speak from the soul. And we know, of course, the King has a lot of passionate views on things. Usually you draw from world events, the Commonwealth, the nation, but also reflect on your own family. Mm -hmm. And I think we can see more of that coming uh, tomorrow. Yes, indeed. And um, just remind us, look, hey, I'm, I'm going to ask a really stupid question here. It won't be the first time or the last time. What, what time is it taking place? Because I always seem to manage to, to mess it up. It's had the same time since 1932, oh, yeah, right, right. which no. is... Just 3 p.m., Patrick. Set your watch. <laughs> Why did you know this? <laughs> we always have lunch right after the Christmas speech. Good way to do it. And that was because at 3 p.m. was the best time for everyone in the empire to oh. be awake, apart from people in Australia and New Zealand, but you captured most of the world at 3 p.m. That's really well, interesting. Yeah. That is, so, actually, it was a good question. It was a good <laughs> Thank question. Thank you very much, yes. So, oh, it's quite interesting that you said there about um, perhaps talking about his own family... Will he touch upon Harry and Meghan and mm. the documentary that's been all over Netflix in the past couple of weeks? I mean, you said before they're very much loved members of the family. Do you think we'll hear anything like that? In well, we don't know yet. We have to wait and see. But we, sh we shouldn't be surprised if he does mention them, as he did in his first speech when he ascended to the throne. The King's policy has been to love-bomb the Sussexes by showering them with affection no matter what they say and to rise above it, which I think is quite a sensible power play. Uh, and, of course, you have to remember that uh, this was recorded just before the last three episodes of Netflix 2, which should be mentioned. Oh, but uh, I think, really, the, 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 the King's... There's a father first and foremost, and while the British nation may have given up on the Sussexes, very much for the king, I think it's a question of turning the other cheek and keeping the door open for his prodigal son. And what could be more Christian than that, especially at Christmas time?